want to get into this section of the presentation where I just talk a little bit about processing email. And I do think it's important for us just to think a little bit about our process. There are many different approaches to process, but I'd love to just give you my take on it, which is all about simplification. And when I think about these robots, they're equally helpful. They're gonna help us declutter, prioritize, organize. Hey, who doesn't need someone to help us with that? So I tried a number of different systems over the years for how do you process email? And some of them were just too complicated or just not realistic. Inbox zero is something that a lot of people say we should do. And what I find is, unless you get a relatively um, medium to low size, size amount of email, and you're one of those people who's extremely precision driven, it's hard to kind of really do that. And there's a bunch of reasons that relate to human nature. I developed this system for me just to kind of overcome email overload, the no low go system, because I thought it was kind of simple. And it's really simpler than that. It always starts with just asking yourself about future value. So when we look at email, our, our brain goes, maybe I need that, maybe I don't. Let's try to quantify that future value, maybe on a scale of one to 10 or something like that. So if something's got a, a zero future value, we know that's a no. And, and so then we're gonna delete it or block it if it's a repeat sender. So it's delete or block if it's a no. If it's low, we wanna archive it or auto route it. That's what I'm gonna kind of get into right now. And then if it's go, in some way we mark it for action and it's, it's, it's been pretty good. I've, I've actually found this to be the best system that I've used over the last couple of years. So the first thing that I did was I realized that I, I have the problem. I'm an information hoarder and my name is Mike Song. And I don't like to let go of something that could help me down the road. So after thinking about this a lot, I decided to finally research what the archive function does. And see this archive function down here? That archive function is essentially the perfect place to put that super low future value stuff so that the hoarder in you knows you could get it back if you really needed to, but you can also offload it from your brain and your inbox real fast. So once I found that, I right clicked on this, I added it to favorites here, I'm sort of recreating what I did, and I popped it up here, and, and, and then I, I, I used this right here. I actually got in there, I think I renamed it uh, once, because you could see I have low archive there, but for whatever reason it is, that should be your archive area. And so here, uh, here you could see that right there creates that quick offload uh, place to go to. Then I, I said, so that's my low, all right? And I'll just remove this one just to keep it simple. And it doesn't have to say low, it just helps with my acronym. And deleted folders is my no, right? So I'm just gonna go straight to deleted folders. So I see this, it's a no, but then I looked at it, I say, it, well, I, I think it's a one-time thing, I drop it to deleted. But if I were to look at something and say to myself, oh, wait a second, um, this big Skyline sock company is something that uh, I just wanna auto route their, their uh, newsletter somewhere, what I can do is I can then auto route. Now I know most of you know how to create the auto route rule, but I think it's important just to go through it because it's part of the, uh, <laughs> the, the no logo system. So you right click is one way to do it. There's five different ways to do this. You can either go to rules up here but, or right click and select rule. And then you could select always move messages from. So that will be the beginning of your auto route sequence. You then find or create a, an email folder and in that way, you're creating the auto route to get less email. When you get less email, you'll get more done. And so that's an important thing to do. So that's part of the process. If I say it's, a, it's low, um, but I don't think of it as an archivable thing, or if it's a, a repeat sender, uh, then I will auto route it to a folder that I create, and that usually works out great. So that's really all there is to that. When it's go, though, um, you've got some new choices that, that you might want to think about. You notice my Go is, I got all excited, I created my Go folder, and then I decided, you know, I finally feel like the Microsoft To-Do Task Manager has gotten good enough where I can jump to it. And so when I see something in my inbox that is a Go, my new Go action is to click the follow-up flag. So I see this thing for an upcoming flight I have, um, go into Wisconsin to do a keynote. I need to do something for my trip. I flag it. That that will automatically put it into the to-do app. 
So if I click on the to do button under flagged email, that should pop right in there. And here it is, just, I don't know if you saw it, it just synchronized really, really fast. I know that many of us still use paper, but can probably also see that there's some real nice advantages to using a Microsoft to do or something like that. So I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, I think there, uh, there's five or six advantages, which I'll try to really give to you real quickly. Here's the five advantages or so for using Microsoft to do. One, I think the My Day feature is cool. Every day you drag what you, the tasks that you've accumulated into My Day so you can create a realistic list of stuff that you need to do. If you're a paper person, you can click the three dot button and print the list out. So you have this nice printed list in front of you, the 10 or 12 things that you can then dog ear and cross stuff off if you like that sort of style. Another nice advantage of using the Microsoft To Do app is that it has a, a smartphone app that you can utilize as an information gatherer and another way that you can enter your tasks. I put mine right here, front and center, so that when I open it up, I am looking at my day or whatever it is I want to look at, and there it is. One of the cool things about the tasks that you, you might have, so if I open up, um, if I open up a message here and I go into this task here, you can see that I can actually open this email in back in Outlook. I have the content of the email there. That's really helpful. And I can add a file here or add a note. I think when it's the add a file, it accesses my camera. So check it out. So if I, if I turn my phone into a camera, now anything I see on any web page, any whiteboard, anything I see that I need to kind of capture a photo of, I can do that. And then I can select use that photo and I just uploaded whatever that is, the handwritten notes, the whatever it is that I saw, it's now inside of the task, inside of, um, inside of my to-do. So I think that's another nice advantage. Um, I think that um, the, um, another, uh, another big advantage, I think, when I open up a task like this, so often there's multiple steps. And so if I click the add step feature in to do, I can add those multiple steps in there. I also think for those of you that have discovered Microsoft Planner, it's going to be integrated with Microsoft to do. They might even fuse it into one thing. So that's another reason that I like to use it. Uh, I like the open and Outlook feature. And the final thing is this. You may be working with a particular manager or colleague or a fellow administrative professional on some type of small project that you both work on together, or maybe you frequently work together on stuff. So a great example of that would be my, my primary executives at our company. We work together on stuff, but then you have this big list of things they're gonna do, you're gonna do. So I've created a list and invited them to that list so that our, we can begin to share our tasks together in one combined view. So let me just show you how easy it is to create this. All that you do is you click on new list. Let's say that I'm gonna create this list with jo for Joan and Mike, right? We're gonna work on this uh, uh, actions that we have together. Joan is so on top of stuff, but maybe I am, am, am missing something. So now I can, uh, I, can, I can start to create tasks, but before I do that, what I need to do is invite, uh, I need to invite uh, Joan to this, uh, I need to invite her to this list. So when I do that, so when I do that, I think it's this one right here. Yes, I create an invitation link, and then I would, I would copy this link and send it over to Joan. Then she could accept it. So let me show you what that will look like once I do that. Now these, this is a shared list. So if I add a task for Sarah, or this, let's pretend it's Joan, uh, Sarah to uh, give feedback on video, right? Maybe I need her feedback on a new video. Which, by the way, we're doing this new video series. We're going to give it to you for free in some of the links that we send out. It's called the 5 and 5 video series. And I think you're really going to like it. And it's just going to be the five best tips for Excel, the five best tips for PowerPoint, and so on, in five minutes or less. So once I've done that, and I, once I've entered that and created that task here for Sarah, right? I'm going to create that task. There it is. And now, see this task here? I can open it up, and I can add steps to complete that task. Oh, first you're going to need to do this. Then you're going to need to do that. Then you're going to need to do this. And there's that all-important assigned to button. I can select Sarah because we share this list. And now she's going to get that, uh, 
that that's very confusing message from me uh, unless I quit out of there. So that's another reason why I think that Microsoft to do is getting better because we I realize that the hardest part of uh, being productive in terms of task accomplishment are the shared sort of tasks where I do something, you do something, it, and it's broken down by person. Um, but I'm sure it could be broken down in many other ways. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a way to think about it. No delete or block, low archive or auto route, go is mark for action.